Well, I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we would like to welcome back to our film, hair, and makeup panel, uh, Julia Flo Carbonell for Emilia Perez, Giuliano Mariano and uh, Yana Carboni for Gladiator 2, and Steve Newburn for Sasquatch Sunset. So for everyone, I, I kind of want to talk about how a the director of the film or a TV show, if you're working on that, impacts your work on the makeup and hair and what kind of discussions uh, you've had with directors in the past that have that have maybe uh, changed things or or, or enlightened you on, on some topics. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Julia first. Thank you. Um, with Jack, it's more like I have a, an amazing artistic director called Virginie Montel, who um, <laughs> works a lot and know oh. how to transcript Jack thought. They are also partner in life, so it helps. Um, but like with Jack, he's really a poetic guy. So we throw some words and we have to find a way to make it like material. And uh, what, what's, what's in, interesting with him, it's like every question that we ask, everything going to be questioned, the color of everything, like the texture, everything. And you think you locked, you locked an answer. The next question will probably reload the answer before. So it's a, way, it's a really circular uh, way of thinking and working. So it's, it's you know, moving all the time. And you have to go with the flow and it's really passionating in so many ways. Tiring too, but passionating. <laughs> A good, a good tiring. A good tiring, a challenging, <laughs> like, uh, it, was, it was the most challenging things that I have to do, but it was the most interesting things that I've done. So I'm really happy. I'm really glad. But Virgin yeah. Montel is my first interface. Mm -hmm. Yana, how about you? Um, well, specifically with Ridley, we always talk through images, <laughs> which is good fun. You know, sometimes I, I see something actually, you know, keep my attention. And uh, even if it's not necess necessarily like directly, um, you say, part of what we're doing, but I have that kind of vibe I'm thinking about it, um, it really does understand. And so we, I think we, we talk the same language in a way. Um, and I think I think he, I learned from him about don't be too academic because my background was very academic. So it was about the perfection of the historical and the, but it, I learned from him that when you have a very solid uh, culture uh, knowing, then you can start to play. And then, so you can do your homework but then you have to let it go and follow your instinct and your vision and make your heart beat. And, um, and it's fun because I say he's, he's not boring. He, he loves to have fun. He's not scared about, you know, doing something to be over the top. Juliana? Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, it, it is. It is, as Juliana said, you know, it's, 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 very, it's very aesthetic. It's very, he likes to go, to push a lot, you know, he doesn't like the same thing. And, you know, even if we did a period movie, uh, and, and many things were period, but then in some characters, he likes always to, like, you know, not to be too academic, eh? as Yana was saying, and going actually a bit more crazy, a bit more uh, funny, fun in a, in a way. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I really love it. I love it because I came basically for, with the same background as Yana, so very, you know, strict when you talk about you know period uh, if it has to be roman it has to be exactly like this exactly like that and uh, but i actually like to go a, li a little bit more you know um, play around a little bit with the with each character you know with each hairstyle and coloring of course especially in gradiero we were saying before about the emperors where with them especially you know we we, we play a lot uh, you know we we go we push a lot our <laughs> Yeah, I think like Ridley always said, the, the vision has to give you an emotion. 
So you need to feel something when you see uh, a character. So it doesn't have to look perfect. I have to give you some, it's like when you look a beautiful painting, you know, or like a beautiful, like modern art. I have to give you the kind of, you know, feeling. So, yeah. And Steve, you're kind of in an interesting situation mm -hmm. because your director is also, or one of your directors is also one of your actors. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, sometimes for this kind of work, it, it can be difficult with the back and forth with the director. This was obviously an exception. One of our directors is actually one of the creatures, characters, um, you know, but uh, yeah, as I said in my my solo thing, it was, we kind of came up with some some basic uh, photoshops just right off the first discussion and just like, hey, here's what I'm thinking. And they were like, this is exactly what we were thinking. And it was like, it couldn't have been any easier, honestly. Um, and it was just kind of just going through the tiny details of it. And and how do we bring out the character of, you know, each of these personalities that we have? And how do we not lose the actor that's in them since we've hired these actors? If we have Jesse Eisenberg and Riley Keough and these people that are, you know, a-list actors, you know, like, I mean, let's not lose them. So it could just be anybody under there. And, but that's kind of a given kind of for what the, the nature of the project was. So for, for us, it couldn't have been any easier the the back and forth in the dialogue. I'm curious, have there been any really noticeable technological advances in, in the makeup and hair process over the years? Is, is there anything that's easier now than it used to be back in, you know, even a decade ago? Um, well, I, I think, you know, probably what I'm thinking about is when, you know, when we move from uh, uh, um, working on film and then became digital, at the beginning it was a little bit scary because oh, yeah. of course it was a different way to, you know, approach to makeup. Um, but I think now the technology once it, it becomes so good that even if you should like in digital, uh, you still have that kind of um, feeling almost in uh, like in, in, in film. So it's, not, it's never too harsh. At the beginning, it was very harsh. Thing. It was very like definition. Mm. And uh, I felt it was a bit too much. Um, but no, I think, you know, I'm still very old school, to be honest. I, you know, um, I'm very intrigued about new technology and new stuff. Uh, but I'm quite new, old school. I quite, sometimes I quite prefer to stick with what I know better. Um, but you know, going, I mean, like prosthetic, you know, of course, the pro bond has been a massive, you know, change for us. But I guess it's more for prosthetic. I guess, you know, with the laser, you know, with the print laser, you know, it's a big difference now. Yeah. Anyone else have any? Um... Any ideas on how the makeup and hair has evolved over the years and has it gotten better? <laughs> I totally agree with Go ahead. <laughs> what she said. No, I mean, obviously for this kind of thing with the, the prosthetic stuff, it's always evolving, um, yeah. you know, and we're, ta we're bringing in the new technologies as, as she mentioned, the, um, you know, scanning now as opposed to tr traditional life casting. And, you know, and it's not, you know, 90% of the time, that's great. It's not quite there yet. And you still have to do a lot of retooling uh, if you do it that way. But, um, you know, materials are changing and evolving and, and that sort of thing. But uh, it's, it's it's still falling back ultimately to the, the tried and true. Uh, and I mean, especially these days, because you don't get nine months anymore to prep something most of the time, you know, as far as where that used to be kind of the norm is you get, you know, months and months to prep stuff. And now it's like, it's expected and a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so true. This is a yeah, topic, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, so and, and all the, you know, and, you know, it's the same for the VFX guys, though. I mean, because they're losing the time on the back end, too, these days. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's the it's the movie machine these days. is just, it's kind of forced just a stream, more of a streamlined process. Mm. Um, are there any misconceptions about what you all do that people at home may not understand? Like maybe even your friends and family don't quite get uh, something specific that you do that you always have to explain uh, a part of your job. Um, do you but my dad what? still doesn't understand what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. People think that all these characters just come to work like that themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, sometimes, you know, especially when the look is very natural. Or, or it looks very natural. They really think that, you know, I just came, you know, 
like you know just a little thing uh, that's it done it, most of the people actually don't know what, what is behind you know every single you know look and even the most natural one sometimes behind there is a lot a lot of work that actually mm -hmm. to make it look nice and natural <laughs> like which is in reality is not exactly as they you know as they see the end of it on the, on, on the screen so yeah especially with wigs and, and facial hair it's so true i mean uh, and i have to say this to, to juliana you know most of the time he put those wigs which they don't look wigs and people they think they are the natural hair and then they say oh this I love your hair and they have to say naturally it's a wig <laughs> so it's um yeah i think sometimes they understand that the, the work there is behind or I think sometimes it's more the, 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 the question I've been asked most of the time from people actually that know in the business is how you come to the idea. Um, what is the process about the idea and how you decide to go from something than something else? Um, but yes, you know, I think they're in shock when you talk to them about the hours. I always say we're like um, farmers, you know, we wake up very early and we go to bed very early. <laughs> Uh, I'd agree with what they were saying, just throwing it in there. On, I mean, with, I mean, it's obvious, you know, with the prosthetic thing like this, it's obvious what we've done, but I mean, there's so much when you get into just subtle human stuff and, and whatnot. And if you've done the job right, you may not even know it's there. And we hear it all the time of like, well, what did you guys do? You know, it's, like, well, it's <laughs> half their face is covered, you know, and it, it's not them, you know, so it's, it's, you know, if you've done your job right, hopefully nobody does notice. So... <laughs> It's not necessarily a bad question of like, what is it you do? So. Yeah, actually, like um, that happened with uh, with the emperor, with um, Caracalla. I told you, you know, he had this uh, pro bono pieces to make his skin be like, you know, post acne. And I remember someone said to him, oh my God, you know, what happened to your skin? Like, he said, no, no, this is actually a piece. I go, so it's not my skin. So it, like, you know, uh -huh. the more you go subtle, sub and more people then don't realize it's makeup or hair, you know? Mm. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a, tricky goal to achieve you know it's actually i think i feel sometimes harder to achieve that that she's like a big makeup like a big hairdo which you know so it's 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 it's, it's a fine line it's a, you know it's a fine work and for each of you i'm curious what made you want to get into this profession and how old were you when you knew and, and maybe were you watching a movie and, and said that's what I want to do with my life um, Julia let's start with you first um, for me because I um, start to draw like really early and then I study art like in high school and then after but I didn't like this uh, this world of art and I like to draw people and it wasn't that popular. Mm. <laughs> it was popular a century ago, but like not that much right now. And I didn't want to talk about myself. And art is about, you know, a lot of, it's like a therapy. I don't know. So I said, what can I do with all that I've learned? And makeup was perfect. It's behind the, you know, the curtain and it's face. And I can't like get uh, bored with face, never, especially woman's face. And so uh, I start I start this way. Okay. What about you, Yana? Are you gonna laugh because then <laughs> you understand that universe you work in very mysterious way. Um. So the movie actually made me want to be a makeup artist was Blade Runner. <laughs> so oh. it's so weird thinking then you know. Thirty years later, uh, you know, I'm here working with Ridley Scott. So that was, you know, I was quite amused about that. You know, I still cannot even get over that. Um, but very Did similar. Did you tell Ridley? Sorry. Did you tell Ridley? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. I, I mean, it was something that movie really, really changed. I still remember like stupid thing, like a little thing. I remember, you know, seeing River wearing this um, nail polish. It was like a kind of brownish and uh, matte brown color which mm -hmm. you know maybe it's very trendy now but it wasn't trendy at the time and mm -hmm. it is you know so cool and uh, that was alien and then like you know blood run all the kind of uh, very modern very like um, um 
almost like the core style. I mean, it's like, I, I have to say, it is a movie that really influenced my my imaginary and my that's why I want to I want to become like a makeup artist and and I think it's it's, it's true it becomes it's even about the relationship you have with the actor the fact you can tell a story through makeup and I, I did like art school and it's, it's like painting and it makes me feel alive it makes me feel happy mm -hmm. you know I'm in my happy place when I do makeup so yeah uh, Juliana, when, when did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Well, uh, I've been a dresser for most of my life. I come from a family of hairdressers, uh, but mainly everybody was working in uh, in salon, so fashion and you know, and salon job. Uh, and I started as well like this. And then at some point, I was just looking for you know new things, new you know. I, I wanted to go, uh, you know, a post so many things but I was feeling that you know it was still too um uh, not too you know, adventurous the, the work you know in the salon and stuff so then when and as soon as I had the occasion you know to try and you know and work in the in the film industry I I, I fall in love immediately and you know I saw that each time you know uh, you can do something different you know with each director you can you know you have a different approach of of the job and and um, uh, uh, you know I started in the in the film industry was probably twenty years ago, uh, so it's already a bit and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I love it I love it I love it you know I wouldn't go back never <laughs> to the yeah. salon like you know I like it so much yeah and Steve close us out here. Um, I couldn't escape sci-fi stuff when I was a kid. My dad worked for NASA and he was just a big sci-fi junkie. And so from the moment I could process what I was looking at on TV or going movies or whatever, I mean, back in the mid seventies, it was like sci-fi, sci-fi, sci-fi. And then of course in through the eighties, the horror generation, all this kind of stuff, but I was just, a, you know, raised on it basically. So I was a big fan of the genre and, uh, you know, of course, even back then with sci-fi comes, you know, aliens, monsters, creatures, that sort of thing. And then I, I was more infatuated actually with the spaceships and stuff. And I wanted to get into miniatures and models and all that kind of stuff. That was kind of my more passion, but I went to school for business. And then ultimately just because I was in Los Angeles, I had connections that led me to a, a creature shop and, and uh, kind of fell in with them. But uh, you know, it was, I've, I've always just kind of said it just, it was meant to be just uh, even though I didn't pursue it actively initially, and not really until I was in my twenties, uh, but uh, yeah. Well, thank you all so much for chatting with us today. This is so information. I learned so much about each of your projects. Um, we hope that we are we have our fingers crossed for you at the upcoming award shows, and we're rooting for each of you guys. Um, have a great rest of your day, and thank you for chatting. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.